art nerds! Today I am doing the field test for the Mozart Como Rebi watercolor set. They reminded me a lot of Kuratake Gensai Tambi watercolors, so I'm doing an edigame test as one of my two field tests. So I have here some Akashia edigame paper. And if you guys don't know what edigami is, you can check this link out here in the card for more information. But it's basically a postcard that you paint on. And it's a rice paper postcard and they handle differently than um, western style watercolor paper. So it's good to kind of go into that. No, know that going into that, sorry. So I've got a water brush. I've got my Como Rebi, and then when I'm finished, I've got some ink pens to kind of tighten up my line art. Now, whenever I do watercolors, or edagame watercolors, I always have kind of a problem where I feel this need to do succulents, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. And one of the neat things about edagame is because you've got such a wide color selection, you're not really going to be doing a lot of blending, you're going to be doing a lot of picking from the palette itself. So I'm just kind of sketching in and it's also okay to work kind of thick and to work kind of fast. So this can be a lot of fun if you want to practice your watercolor but you don't necessarily have a lot of time to devote to it. And it does take some practice to get used to. I've done a few. I enjoy doing them. It is still winter here, otherwise I would do something kind of seasonal and local because that's one of the, the points of edagame is to do something kind of seasonal. I'm sure you guys can also find lots of good tutorials here on YouTube for how to do this. And given the nature of the rice paper, there's a lot of sort of wet into wet blending. Because the rice paper will stay wet for a while, and then it diffuses a lot. So I find it's best for me. Your mileage may vary with your level of control, but I find it's best for me to do sort of um, mm, looser kind of paintings. And you don't have to use a water brush. You can definitely use whatever kind of brush suits you, but I find using a water brush makes this really much simpler for me. The only problem is that sometimes water brushes, like this Jane Davenport water brush, will start to tear up the paper. So, you do kind of want to think about that. But so far, so I did not, I did not wet, I did not prepare my Como Rebi watercolors in any way. I just started painting. And so far, they activate very quickly, which is kind of a, a trait I've noticed with water, watercolors that are kind of ideal for etagami. And Edigami watercolors can be really good for like doing travel sketches because they activate so quickly. Not edigami. Well, yes. Sorry. Talking and painting is always a hard thing for me. I don't need quite so much saturated color. But I'm going to get it. I would also recommend you don't use additional water to blend out for these sort of watercolors because as you can see they really spread out a long way on this kind of paper.
you can also do uh, wet over dry techniques on etagami paper and using etagami watercolors. I will demonstrate that in a moment. I'm going to actually grab some of this neon green. I didn't think I would use too much neon, which is silly because succulents are very bright. You know, not always thinking things all the way through. And as I mentioned in the Unbox and Swatch video, I have been told that there's no such thing really as neon watercolors. And I guess that means at this point in time, we can't, we can't, I know we can do it with dyes. I guess we can't do it with pigments. And I'm sure with chemistry, we will be able to eventually. And that might not be true. There might be, there might be pigments that fluoresce. So let me know if I'm wrong. And I'm going to grab some neon pink as well. So, so far, these handle very much like I would expect watercolor for this purpose to act. So, if you are interested in doing an edigami postcards, if that's something that sounds like fun, these could be a very affordable way to do it. You get 40 colors for $25 and you can get them off of Amazon. And I still have a field test for how they handle as kind of traditional Western watercolors because these aren't marketed as edigami uh, watercolors or watercolors for edigami. They're marketed as just watercolors for artists, affordable watercolors for artists. And so far, they are definitely performing in that capacity. And I'm sure there's some people who are have noticed that there isn't a pre-mixed skin tone in all these 40 colors and are kind of bummed about that, but I like mixing my own skin tones, so that's not really a deal breaker for me. Now, because you get the metallics and you get the neons, you don't get some of the lighter colors you would get in some of the origami set, uh, the Gansai kind of sets. So, I am not, I didn't get like a very light blue, for example. Um, I could mix that using the white. In fact, that is something I should probably go ahead and do is grab some of the white and see how that mixes decently well. And that's kind of used to make a more opaque, lighter shade. Rather than a translucent, lighter shade. Which you would get if you just added more water to the paint itself.
And something I really kind of love about doing watercolors like this is that it's intended to be very quick and gestural. It can still be beautiful, but it's really about being able to send somebody an original so it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done by you. So I think it's a very um, inviting sort of first watercolor. Okay, so I've got kind of a base down. I'm going to grab some burnt umber. And I'm going to start filling in some of the dirt, kind of blocking in. And I don't really have darker browns with this. I have Payne's gray and gray that I can kind of use to make this a little bit darker. So I'm going to grab some Payne's gray. Kind of float that in there. And this set is a little bit too big to take with me when I go to Japan, but it would be really fun to do some quick postcards and maybe send them out to my patrons. I'm, su I'm sure while I'm in Japan I'll find something that would work. Now, I've got my paper pretty well saturated at this point, and I think once I finish blocking in the soil, it'll probably be a good time to take a break, go clean out my water brush, refill my water brush, and let this dry. All right, that's a little drier. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start tightening up some of the colors and adding a little bit more detail but I don't want to get too tight because that's not really the point. This can also be a good way if you're a bit of a control freak when it comes to your watercolor like me I know uh, this can be kind of a good way to practice doing looser sketches having fun kind of just making peace and letting go experimenting with things like I said earlier I think it's a really good kind of first watercolor project for people who are looking to get back into it I mean most of us kind of dabbled with it as kids because you know, Crayola watercolor sets, pretty ubiquitous in most classrooms. But uh, maybe we haven't picked it up in a while. This is a good way to kind of ease back into that little pressure. Of course, any 
any sketching from reference is a great way to kind of ease in low pressure because you don't have to show people if you don't want to. I think that's something a lot of a lot of artists forget is that maybe they think that everything has to be a product for show. Whereas it's okay to have a lot of something that didn't work. Heck, this might not even work, but I'm already okay with that because I've discovered what I want to know, which is that these watercolors perform decently well for this application. I still need to try them for something a little, a little more structured and a little more mannered, but they're fairly comparable to the Gansai Tombi. Not, it's not identical, I mean. But. Whoa. Wet paper. But if you didn't want to spend what is it? What is a full set cost? This is 40. I mean, these are 40 colors and it's 25. Um, I know it's more than that for the Kuretake. If you don't want to spend all that and you don't have anywhere where you can kind of get it at a lower price, this is a good way to have that and not spend money you don't have to spend. Oh, oh okay. I'm going to drip. And I'm using um, a craft mat to kind of mix my colors. I do, my quote unquote dirty, <laughs> dirty craft mat, which is brand new, but it's already gotten stained. But, you know, I believe in using my supplies to use them, not just to, to have them and have them look pretty and clean all the time. So things get used, things get dirty. Ooh, that is way too dark. I don't want to clean these pans because I'm putting a lot, I'm polluting that yellow a lot. That's okay, it's pretty easy to do. Just use like a wet napkin or even just a white wet brush. Ooh. Kind of wreck that. That is okay. We're cool with that. I put a lot of water on this paper. So normally the water brushes I use aren't quite so leaky. There's something about the Jane Davenport brushes that just want to like ooze water. And I don't know why because I have a Sketchbox signature which is made by the same manufacturer basically they use the same body mold and the same technology and it doesn't leak in fact I used it to death it is dead now the bristles are all catawampus I'm just adding some darker brown and they seem on the edigami paper to be fairly opaque but I'm also painting really I don't know if you guys noticed I'm painting really thick with them like I would with the Kuratakis so that could definitely be a reason why 
they seem more opaque whenever you like really glop your watercolor paint on like it's gouache it tends to look a little more a little less translucent this is a very sloppy demonstration I'm just using a little bit of a darker blue, like a blue green to kind of, I may have even overworked it at this point though. And then I'll do a little bit in the shadow, like how I literally just said, I probably overworked it and then I'm like, no, I'm going to add some more. And then before I ink it, I want to let it fully dry but they handle pretty comparable to the Gantai Tambi or Tambi Gantai yeah oh my gosh my brain always twists that so I'm gonna let this dry clean up some of this mess and then we can ink so now that this has had a chance to dry I can go ahead and start inking it I'm just gonna go ahead and use a pigment based ink even though uh, we're not going to be applying water to it after this it's I don't know I like I like this brush pen I like this ink and I'm trying to keep the light brushy sort of look intact so I'm not trying to necessarily correct faults Just tighten it up a bit and now that it's dry it might be a little chalky um, I don't think it's necessarily any chalkier than some of the other paintings I've done with a Gansai style watercolor or any other paintings I've done on this particular paper either because it could be this paper has a bit of that kind of softening effect. Try to have my hand less covering what I do. I mean you can opt to go really tight I think I think with something as sketchy and loose as the painting if you went really really tight it could add a different kind of charm to it um, sort of like creating order out of chaos so you could probably go either way
And I probably should have gone in and added some pink on this one since there's some nice hot pink in the reference. I would have added a little bit more visual interest, but that's okay. I actually still could. I could let this ink dry and then go in and do that since this is a pigment ink and pigment inks are typically, I don't want to say always because, you know, you guys take my word for it and you don't test it and it ruins your piece, but they're typically waterproof. I do recommend you always do test. With this one, um, I couldn't really get a definitive answer because I would get some color migration, but not a lot. And it's enough that made me kind of nervous. Like if I ink this and then really saturated the paper, would it come back up? And I know my go-to is succulents for these kind of things. It's because they have a lot of different colors. Um, it's a very simple kind of repetitive shape. So I can not only test a bunch of colors out, but I can do it very simply without having to spend a lot of time doing an underdrawing. So succulents are really nice for this sort of thing. All right, so I think it turned out pretty good. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today while I did the first of two field tests for the Mo Moz Art Como Rebi watercolor paint set. It is a 20, I mean, a, it is a 40 color paint set, including neons and metallics for under $30. And you can get it on Amazon by clicking the description in the link below. This was an Edagami postcard painted on Akashia Edagami paper. You can find out more information about that by heading on over to natosoup.blogspot.com. I'm having all kinds of brain farts today, dang. So I hope this was helpful, useful, informative for you guys. And if you didn't see the swatch test, you can click here to check that out now. So I will see you guys in the second of these two field tests. Bye, guys.